Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. What I have for you today is Evasion Hindsight. Stand by. Morning. My name is Captain Ogle, and I'll be your primary instructor for this block of instruction. Take out a pen and paper and prepare to copy. Be prepared to commit all of this information to memory in the event of a real-life scenario in which you are a survivor attempting to re-enter friendly lines and enemy-occupied territory. You may have to exercise all this information based off memory alone. I can't keep that voice up forever anymore, so I'm not even going to try. Now, what I have for you today is evasion. More specifically, step three, which is hide sight or hole up sight. Some things I can't tell you because they are classified or secret. What I can give you is information on how to set up a hole-up site or hide site, and then what I've done in the past, what I've done in training, and then how we plan and actually execute a hide site as part of an evasion process. Now let's talk about step three, the topic of today's video, and that is the hide site. We want to have a hide site that first offers cover and concealment, not only from the ground, but also from the air. That way we avoid detection from aerial assets of the enemy and then from the ground forces as well. We also want to have a site that is away from natural lines of drift. Those are just the paths of least resistance that people walk or animals walk through the woods instead of going through a thicket. We tend to go around that thicket to make it easier on ourselves. We want to be away from those natural lines of drift and avenues of approach. We want to be away from avenues of approach like roads, LDAs, linear danger areas, and then trails, anywhere that high traffic has been known to go from humans. We want to be away from those to decrease the chances of being detected. We then want a hide site that offers multiple escape routes. That way we're not being cornered into a thicket or into a rock face or anything. Uh, if enemy forces should discover us, we can beat feet out of that hide site through multiple directions to avoid capture. We then want to have a hide site that allows for communications. We want to be able to communicate with recovery assets, with our handlers, with friendly forces. We want to have a good spot where communication is effective. And then next, H2O and or resources. We want to have a hide site or hole up site that is close to water or proximate to water where we can fill up either on the way to the hide site or if we need to leave that hide site to go fill up on water we can do so we want to have those resources available this is somewhat last on our priority because this is an evasion scenario we're trying to avoid detection and avoid capture filling up on water is great trying to find food is great but we're really trying to maximize the distance and time between us and the enemy to avoid capture okay all right so this location is our hide site on the map we have templated it as a appropriate hide site. This provides good cover and concealment from the air and ground. There are resources nearby, away from natural lines of drift and avenues of approach, and that we can effectively communicate with hire at this location. It's a good hide site. We've already gone through step one, immediate actions, responding to our X, and then step two, initial movement, putting distance and time between us and the X, and using a pattern like a zigzag to attempt to fool our pursuers, giving us more time to avoid detection and move to recovery. At approximately two to 400 meters or so away from our templated hide site we stop and get security this triangle is just the icon for security get 360 degree security and then we conduct seals which is s l l s stop look listen smell we are stopping calming ourselves down we are looking through the terrain to see any movement or sign of human activity. We are listening for human activity, such as vehicles, people talking, people making noise, and then we are smelling. We are attempting to smell in the area. Humans are obnoxious creatures, so we can smell things in the woods, like deodorant, bug spray, cigarettes, car exhaust. They can smell all of those things in the woods because the woods obviously do not have those smells in them as much as a city does and so when humans come into the wilderness they tend to bring those smells with them 
So we stop, look, listen, and smell. We're doing this for as long as possible to ensure that our next movement is gonna be as safe as possible because we're going into our height sight. Now there are a couple of ways we can do movement into our height sight. The first one is called the hook. We move in a straight line distance past our height sight, or what is our height sight, and then hook back around into our height sight to occupy. What this does is create a path to one side of our height sight. We hook around, and this gives us the opportunity to observe this path if we're being pursued to determine that enemy personnel are pursuing us, following our trail, and before they get into our height sight and find us or potentially walk past, we can use one of our escape routes to get away from that enemy pursuer. So that's the hook method. Mm -hmm. Another method to get into our height sight is called the dog leg. We can, again, walk straight, perpendicular on line with where our height sight is gonna be and then simply do a 90 degree left face and turn into our height sight. What this does is again, creates a path that pursuers could follow we could observe them from our height sight and still have time to escape based on our dog leg right here and see the enemy moving up this path into our height sight. In the event we need to defend ourselves as well, it gives us a perfect fire range where we can engage the enemy, attempt to kill or destroy, and then escape and evade. All right, imagine if you will, this circle is our height sight. Let's say we used the hook method to enter our height sight. What we want to do is clear our height sight. We can either take this by force, meaning that we just occupy immediately, or we can clear this site, which is probably the safer option, but it takes a little bit more time. To clear this, we just do zigzag pattern and clear the area that we're going to occupy as our height sight, and then conduct seals again. Once we have seals conducted, we can kick out LPOPs, listening posts, or observation posts. If now with a LPOP, if we're with multiple people, we can kick them out a couple meters, and then dog leg again, similar to our dog leg when we occupied our height sight, or similar to our hook method. It's for the same purpose, LPOPs to provide security at a height sight. Meanwhile, everybody else inside is still maintaining security and alertness. They're just going through priorities of work, and then we change out personnel at the LPOP to give these guys a rest and put fresh blood on that LPOP to remain alert and provide early detection. Now that we're in our height sight, let's talk about priorities of work. Number one priority is security. We maintain security. Prior to kicking that LPOP out, we should probably determine escape routes as well. We call this the black and gold plan. We give different directions, opposite directions to each other with a distance and then a known terrain feature like a hilltop to everybody in the group in the event we are discovered and we have to escape quickly. The leader would shout black or gold to let everybody in the group know they need to move out that distance, that direction to that terrain feature where we can link up and then move to another evasion hide site. Next is communication. We communicate to hire our status and then our location using a special means. Blackjack Cherokee 01, three IPs, 0802750. How copy over. Next priority is signals. These should be ready at all times during the evasion process. We should have signals on us as part of our survival kit. But we have mirrors, panels, flares, whistles ready to go at a moment's notice in the event recovery forces are inbound. We can signal them into our location and we're recovered, thus preventing the rest of the evasion process and stopping any chance the enemy has of capturing friendly forces. Now, our next step is treating casualties at a height sight, we can now take the time to effectively treat casualties. During immediate actions and initial movement, we may not have been able to treat casualties effectively. We can only apply a bandage quickly or a tourniquet and then continue movement to prevent being captured or detected by enemy. But at our height sight, now we can actually treat casualties. So we could do that here. Our next step is inventorying our kit. During immediate actions and initial movement, we may not have been able to actually inventory our kit or know what's in our kit. If we grabbed it, we're not really part of that crew. We can inventory the items in that kit and then distribute that amongst the groups. So everybody has survival items on them. Next step is reevaluating our situation. 
Now we can reevaluate the tactical scenario and then we can update our plan if things have changed on the ground, but we can update that and we're continuously doing that throughout the entire evasion process. Another important step is noise and light discipline, and in conjunction with this, applying more camouflage. Apply more camouflage to prevent being detected, and then we have more camouflage on us for evasion movement, our next step after we leave our hide site. This also entails maintaining noise and light discipline. We want to be as silent as possible, and we want to eliminate the chances of any reflection or light emitting from our hide site, giving our position away. And then finally, our last step, is our rest plan. Our rest plan is going to be the last thing we do in the hide site. We want to maintain security always. So there's always going to be somebody up at the LPOP, somebody maintaining internal security at the hide site, and then somebody on the radio. So we shift in and out of those positions as well as implementing rest plan to give people time to sleep. But our rest plan and eating and hygiene are going to be some of the last steps that we do at that hide site because all of these are entirely more important. Now, the situation on ground will dictate whether we can build a shelter, start a fire, hunt, or attempt to trap animals, fish, or go for other resources. So that situation is gonna be dependent on the ground at the high site at that time, whether we can do any of those things. But those things are very possible, especially in a good location, if we've planned correctly, and we're executing our evasion plan of action, and we can effectively execute survival priorities at the hide site other than the ones I've already listed. Now we're done with our hide site and we're getting ready to withdraw from our hide site, move into step four, which is evasion movement and continue towards our recovery area. Now for our withdrawal plan, we still have security. We have an alert plan and then escape routes issued to everyone. The alert plan is simply us waking each other up at night or pulling in the LPOP. The LPOP has discovered enemy movement. They come back, alert everybody in the hide site, and then we move out along our escape route. So this is still important even through the withdrawal process. Next is route plan. Everyone should know the route plan. We update our plan continuously, just like in the steps of occupation with the priorities of work inside the hide site. We continuously update our plan and everyone knows the route. Everyone knows where we're gonna stop, different points along our route so they can find their way in the event they're without a map or so everybody can communicate effectively in the event the leader is taken out. Next, we can seal our hide site. We pack everything up and then we leave no trace. We turn everything back the way it was, hiding a Dakota fire hole, hiding our shelter location. Any places we've laid down for long periods of time, we can seal that. We can even apply certain counter tracking techniques now, like more camouflage, concealing broken limbs. If we if we broke limbs off a tree by putting dirt over that limb, we can even take our socks off, put them over our boots, and prevent tracking in that manner by counter tracking a little bit and concealing our footprints in the soil. Next. We bring everybody in, we get 100% accountability of men, weapons, and equipment, make sure we have everything, and we're not leaving any trash or any important equipment or personnel behind, and we're moving out together. And then, lastly, communicate up to higher again. It's a communication, is a continuous process in an evasion scenario, clearly, but we communicate again that we're leaving the hide site and moving along our evasion plan of action. And then finally, we can start to begin to go into step four, which is evasion movement, deliberate methodical movement, to a recovery area to avoid detection and make it to a recovery area to be recovered by friendly forces. So there are a lot of things to consider for a hide site. Step three of the five steps of evasion. Now, the hide site, you can see how this crosses over for individuals like lost hikers, people who go to the wilderness. They can have this plan in place if they know a location and weather rolls in, they can't get out of the weather soon enough, they can go to their hide site and seek cover and go through priorities of work to communicate with people, let them know they're safe and then survive in that area until the weather rolls through or in case there's an injury or something happens. This can also work well for urban individuals, people who live inside city dwellings, in the event there's mass unrest or there's some sort of catastrophe, natural disaster, whatever it is, you can establish a hide site and it's just a survival point where you're making your way out of the city. If there's some sort of an emergency, you can move to that location, survive there, communicate with other people, gather other individuals, and then move safely out of harm's way using these steps and sub-steps for the evasion process. It's a very handy piece of knowledge to have, and you can apply it to a lot of different situations, not just military side, but you can use it for civilian purposes as well. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked that video on evasion hide site, step three of the steps of evasion. 
Now, if you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I would like you guys for everything you do for me, for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.